Kia ora and welcome to Counter Narratives here at Performance Arcade, today at Toy Poneke. Uh, we're going to be talking to John Jarbo about his cabaret uh, extravaganza uh, and maybe a little bit about American politics and New Zealand politics as well. But let's give him a call and see what's up. Hello. Hey. Hi, John. Thanks for talking to us. No, thank you. Thanks for talking to me. Uh, you're in Philadelphia, is that correct? I am in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in what we call the Beard Cave, which is where my company, the Bearded Ladies, rehearses. And it's in the basement of a of Episcopalian church where they put the queer cabaret performers. Oh, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Does that bring a certain energy to the work? Uh, it's a little reminiscent of a closet. No, um, <laughs> I, it's great. It's great. It, it's charming. There's a nursery school above, so you may feel or hear the sounds of little pitter patter above us, and we're creating ir irreverent work underneath their feet. Yeah. And what kind of work are you bringing to performance arcade? So I'm a cabaret artist uh, by trade, uh, which is something that you might not hear very often um, because. No one really knows what cabaret is. I don't even quite know what it is, but I do it. Um, so I am, I'm bringing a night of cabaret to the festival, um, to the arcade. It's called This Is What You Need Right Now, a night of cabaret. So it's very clear as to what it is. Um, and it's going to be myself, uh, uh, another uh, a pianist slash singer from Philadelphia named Pax Wrestler, who will be accompanying me. And I'm reaching out to a bunch of local artists, um, New Zealand artists, and also artists that are local to the festival, that are part of the festival community, to contribute um, to this evening of cabaret. That sounds amazing. Uh, when you say, this is what you need right now, uh, are you talking about because of the way the world is, because of the, the climate going on? Uh, I, I'm just saying, like, if you need a drink or if you're, like, a little horny or something, like, we're going to take care of it all. No, uh, I say that because cabaret, um, cabaret is the most direct and live art forms, um, and it's one of the most responsive art forms. Uh, it's often designed to talk about what's happening in the world right now, and because it's a dialogue with the audience, there's no fourth wall, there's no... Um, there's no pretense, really. Uh, even though there are costumes, I'm kind of talking directly to you. And if you're on your cell phone, I'm going to take your cell phone away from you and, and hide it. Um, and if you say something, it becomes part of the show. Um, because of that, it creates an environment that uh, is best suited to talk about now, what you're feeling now, politically, socially, do you need an escape? Do you need to be insulted? Do you need an absurdist dance? What is it you need? And so I'll be curating a program that is going to uh, showcase different tactics and approaches that uh, a diverse range of artists in this festival have to art and politics and living in the world in 2018 as we are right now. Uh, and, and hopefully something in there will be something that you need. That's fantastic. Is that, is, do you see the sort of, uh, you're using local artists uh, as well, but do you find in, in Cabaret that um, there, is, there is something particularly American in the style there, or is there uh, New Zealand? Is there, is there a difference, I'm guessing, between the two styles that perhaps those of us who aren't as familiar with Cabaret will be able to see? That's a great question. Uh, I mean, this st cabaret started in Paris, then kind of spread like an STD all over Europe. Uh, and it, it, so it's not really a particularly American art form, but there are different, I think, approaches uh, in different geographical locations and different cultural contexts. Um, uh, I mean, and that can come from making art in a place that's more censored. Uh, uh, it, can, it can be about the density of your city, um, I don't really actually know a lot of New Zealand based artists so this is an effort for me to learn about your community and learn about those artists and to connect artists, international artists who are practicing the form um, 
and get them in dialogue with one another. It's sort of a cross-pollination experiment. And I'm guessing under the current political climate, it might be uh, quite a rebirth of cabaret going on in America right now. Yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's a lot that we need right now. So there's a lot of. I think I'm answering your question properly. Um, yes. But there's yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of cabaret going on right now, and cabaret tends to um, boil up at times of sociopolitical crisis. And one of my earnest questions as a cabaret artist is that because it's is that like it's a smoke signal, like the fire has started, it's too late, or is is cabaret an enabling art form or can cabaret contained in the form are there tactics and approaches to the form that can actually help us uh, activate um, help us get out on the streets or help us heal um, so I'm always searching for different ways of using the form to address what my audience is coming in to the room with what my community needs it strikes me that one thing I've noticed in audiences of cabaret shows it's very cathartic uh, for quite a few of them uh, and uh, it allows them to sort of release this thing. I hear noises sometimes from cabaret audiences where you feel you haven't, maybe they haven't even heard that noise come out of their body before. It's a very visceral responses. Yeah, I, I think visceral is a great word for it. Uh, one of the things that allows that is that uh, there's, we don't have the tyranny of politeness going on. Um, with a lot of other, that we encounter with a lot of other art forms. People are a little drunk. Um, if they drink and they're relaxed um, and I think it, it's, it becomes increasingly radical to to have live performance that is insistent upon its liveness so to actually sit on your lap to actually poke you and say I'm poking you right now I'm a real human being I'm not a virtual poke I'm not sitting on your lap virtually this is me and we're having a dialogue and I think in this climate um, the way we're processing our lives now, uh, more and more we need to be violently reminded that we are human <laughs> and that we are not a screen, which is ironic in this conversation, but yes. But no, it's, uh, it's funny because uh, I can, all the way over here in New Zealand, completely relate to what you're saying in Philadelphia about the need for human contact, the need to actually, and with all of this stuff, with all of this technology and with things like reality TV, you do find that people uh, forget about, you know, not just the danger, but as you say, like the, the, the need for the immediacy uh, of, of live interaction. Mm -hmm. Totally, totally. Oh, it's great. It sounds, yeah. it sounds like you're gonna be um, bringing a, a certain uh, manic energy uh, to the performance arcade. Uh, this year. Uh, this I'll year. be touching a lot of people. <laughs> Very literally, but only with consent. It's still fun, a fundamental, fundamental lesson being learned still in, in 2018. Consent. Yeah. Is, is, it, is it interesting when, you, when you're doing... You know, so it's, it's late night performance. It is wild. It is free. But the, having this in, incredible political messages... Uh, underneath, do, do you find you have to, to watch between where it gets heavy and where it stays light, or do you find that comes more organically? Uh, I think it takes, I think it should feel like it's really organic, and it's actually a lot of work and thought that's put into curation and put into sensitivity to the audience. I, I think uh, cabaret artists are virtuosic listeners. Um, and so you kind of ride an audience, you ride the waves of their emotions and, and what they're, you, you want to push them to the limit. Uh, and cabaret emerged as an art form because of the rise of the modern city where people's experiences were changing. Uh, they, were, they were no longer in rural, rural areas, they were running into people in crowds and having these rich uh, experiences with m much stimuli, many stimuli happening all at the same time. And so Cabaret kind of recreates that experience of being in a city crowd where you run into an earnest moment and then you get jostled and thrown into a sad song and then thrown into an ironic joke or a satire. It should feel playful and like it can go very deeply into a heavy zone and then immediately contrast that with a light moment or a joke. Um, and that's where the real power of the form comes. Yeah, it sounds brilliant. Well, John, thank you so much for talking to us today. And I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing what you bring into Performance Arcade in just a couple of weeks.
Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it too. Maybe I will be sitting on your lap. I will very much look forward to that, sir. <laughs> you literally, or, or you, the general audience public. Be excited. <laughs> <laughs> you can take turns. There's only a few of us here in New Zealand. You can probably get around all of us. Good. That's my plan. <laughs> Thanks so much, John. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you. That was John Jarbo talking to us from Philadelphia about his planned uh, cabaret performances here at the Performance Arcade in 2018. We'll see you again. Kakito.